having fun in the process because most kids uh, lose the commitment and love for the game because, you know, unfortunately the parents, they put too much pressure onto their kid to become and improve at such a rate at such a young age. But how can then parents create a fun, playful experience, experience or environment without the fear of judging the players? Well, first off, I, I would say that this is a, a much bigger discussion than looking at just parents, right? Yeah, I think the sure. parents certainly certainly have a role to play. Um, I think any of us, you know, in this industry, we, we've probably all said the same things when you talk to parents. It's like, hey, listen, what, what we would like a parent to do is when the kid gets in the car after a game is not start analyzing what they did or what they didn't do or what they could do better, but let the kid lead the conversation. Let the player lead the conversation. Let the kid decide, you know, what he or she is ready to talk about and feels comfortable talking about. Um, and instead being, being a good fan instead of someone that's trying to coach them. Now, I would say the, the, the other pieces that tie into this, obviously, or, or is the entirety of the environment that the player is in. Uh, us coaches have a massive responsibility to make sure that the kids are – and I wouldn't say not feeling pressure because pressure is a reality of, of any level you play in. You feel yeah. pressure from playing with your friends. You feel pressure from playing for your school team. You feel pressure from playing in front of your parents, right? Yeah. You don't want to really want to let anybody down. Um, you want to perform well and impress people. And it's up to, I think, us coaches to make sure we're creating an environment where players can, can deal with pressures appropriately. Mm-hmm. And, it goes unsaid that obviously we would love for parents to fall in line and, and be yeah. doing the same thing so that we're all working towards the same goal, but we can't act as if pressure doesn't exist in life, right? You're going to face this anywhere you go in any profession. So can we at least help prepare you to deal with it appropriately and recognize when it's appropriate to add pressure and when it's appropriate to remove it or to, to mitigate it and then giving kids skills to deal with it. I would say the right way or understand that it exists and, and making sure they're prepared to deal with it. Mm-hmm. So how can you figure out then if a player should be added or applied pressure? Because, you know, there are some kids who are just more, I guess, grew up in tougher environments and they already experienced more failure. So they're comfortable with it. How do you find that balance then when you're like, okay, this kid actually needs some pressure in order to improve and get better at a faster rate. And this player, too much pressure and we're actually crumbling and we're creating a bad experience for him. How do you find that balance? Uh, first off, that's a fantastic question. Um, what I would, the, the thing that stands out to me, and I just, I speak from personal experience with players yeah. that I've worked with. Um, and, you know, in, in any environment you're in, you're going to get, you're going to get opinions from 10 different yeah, yeah. people in terms of what a player needs. Right. And it's, it's up to you as the coach to be able to take all that information, collect it, analyze it, and figure out how you want to apply it. So if I'm looking at a player, let's say on my roster, who I myself and maybe our directors would deem as a national team caliber player, we want to make sure that that kid is obviously in an environment where he's, let's say, dealing with the pressures that may come with being in a national team environment and maybe someday a professional environment. And that could be playing him up one weekend with an older age group. That could be... That could be actively planning in a session to be like, hey, maybe telling my assistant coach, hey, listen, I'm going to be on this kid today. Okay. I need you to be the good guy. I'm going to be the bad guy. Oh, wow. And I'm going to put some pressure on him. I'm going to get on top of him for mistakes he makes. And we're going to see how he responds. And then let's have a discussion maybe afterwards with him. So he doesn't think that we're, we're doing it thoughtlessly, but that there's actually a plan here. So, okay, he made a couple of mistakes today. I got on him about it. He reacted poorly by talking back or by making even more mistakes. Let's talk to him about it. Let's try to create a plan to deal with it. So I think it's just kind of pushing the threshold little bits, bits by bit on different days, seeing how players respond, and then having a conversation about it. I think if you're doing it randomly or thoughtlessly, then similar to fitness, yeah, it doesn't end up serving any purpose. There needs to be a plan in place. There needs to be thoughtfulness to it. And you'll even see in like the, the weekly training plan that I have basically uh, for like the structure of my training throughout the week. Um, I not only have like the periodized fitness process, process of what intensity we're going to be on on any day throughout the week leading to the game and what the structure of the session is going to look like. 
but also built into there is a weekly plan of how the communication to the players is going to be at what intensity level. Like maybe yeah. there's going to be, you know, on Wednesdays, I'm going after players. On wow. Thursdays, I'm a bit more relaxed, you know, and, and playing around with that idea as well in terms of more of like a, like a psychological periodization, yeah. more or less. Mm -hmm. So 